Hello and welcome. A few days ago, I made a post on my pages that I wanted to sell this one. And the internet did not agree. So I wanted to find out if we are still friends or not. And spoiler alert, yes, we are. And no, I won't sell it. I created some nice ambient sequences using only the analog 4, no external effects. And I want to show you how I did this. And I hope that you can learn something. Before I recreate all the sounds and sequences of this track, I want to say a few things about the Analog 4 from Electron. This won't be a complete tutorial or review because the usual suspects already covered this on the internet, but I have to say a few things so that you understand where we are going. It's called Analog 4 because you have four completely individual mono synthesizers in this machine. So in this case, on track 1, I had this sound. On track two, I had that one. And track three. And track four. There's also an effect track. You have a chorus and a delay and a reverb built into this machine. There are sends, so you can send from each of the tracks you can send it into chorus, delay and reverb individually, um, but it's not per track. The most important feature of this synthesizer is the built-in sequencer. It's possible to put in notes on different steps and actually this is very powerful in, in the Electron machines because you can modulate every parameter of all the synth engines individually for each step. Um, I will go into that more into detail later, but it's for me, uh, I think, the, the most important feature of these Electron machines that they have their own sequencer. Technically, it's also possible to play everything through MIDI in. So if you have a sequencer or computer and want to play everything from, from external sources, it's possible. But to me, the strength of the synthesizer is really the built-in sequencer. I will now create a new pattern and also initialize the kit and start over from scratch. It is possible that the result will be different from what I showed you at the beginning of this video, but the purpose of this is to show you the workflow and how to create some music with the analog 4. Now that I initialized the kit, I have a very basic sawtooth on all of the four tracks. And with these buttons, you can navigate through the different pages and they are all the same on each of the four. So everything that I show you on track one could be done on any of the other parts. So the first thing you see that oscillator one is set to sawtooth wave and the level is already quite high, of course. and um, the second oscillator is silent at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to bring in the second oscillator and I want to tune it down one octave and change the waveform to square wave. And what I like is that it's possible to do some pulse width modulation right out of the box. You don't need to sacrifice an LFO or something, so it's possible to increase the pulled with modulation amount here and adjust the speed. 
-hmm. And what I like for these kinds of sound is to have um, a very slow modulation of the pulse width modulation. It gives some some nice movement into the sound without um, being too too aggressive. Then I also want to have a slight detune. Yeah, this is about it. Um, then I go to, to the filter page. Each voice has two filters. So the first one is always a 24 dB low pass filter and the second filter can be set to different modes. There is high pass, bump pass, bump stop and some other interesting things. But for now, I think I won't use this. So in the default setting, it's like bypass because it's a high pass filter and it's completely uh, open. So it does not really affect the sound. So first I, I bring down the frequency of the sound. Um, and then I increase the depth of the filter envelope. And here on this page, um, you can access uh, the filter envelope and on this one, the amp envelope. So um, by double tapping, you can also go to second um, envelope or third envelope, so to say. But um, when it says envelope F, you can change the envelope of the filter. What I really like is that there are different slopes. So when you select um, this, I think it's the standard uh, default value, it's a very snappy envelope. It reminds me uh, a lot of the Pro 1, um, but you can also set it to, to other slopes to have a more slope but I like to to have this one here maybe also change it. yeah this is already quite cool um, so Yeah, I like this. So what I will do now is I will go into the the mode where I can um, enter some steps. So It is also possible to enter the notes by using a real-time edit mode, but I will show you this in, I think, the second or third track. So now it would be the right time to add some effects. So I go to the AMP page and there I go into the delay send. And from there I hit the effect button and go to the correspondent page here um, and you see a few very obvious parameters um, of course you need to raise the volume a little bit I also want some ping pong stereo effect uh, when you activate it nothing happens you need to increase the stereo with with this one give it some some space. It's also a good idea when you're working with um, bass sounds to filter out some of the low end in the delay. So it's possible to do this with um, these high pass and low pass filter knobs here. And then it's also possible to send the delay signal into the reverb. So it would be possible to go um, on track one and send the signal to delay and reverb at the same time but it's also possible to build a chain so with this one the signal would go um, parallel into the delay and into the reverb 
but with that setting it's possible to send to, to create a parallel no a serial chain a serial chain so that the delay goes uh, the signal goes into the delay and from there into the reverb and on the reverb page i also want to increase the decay time to have a very lush a nice ambient kind of sound Something that I like a lot about these electron machines is that you can modulate different parameters for each step. So I want to have the length of the filter decay a bit higher on this step. And maybe I want to have more resonance of the filter on that step. So I press and hold this one, go to the correspondent page and increase the value for this step. Quite cool. Now I want to show you this one. It's called Quick Performance Amount. You have something that is called a performance macro page. You can access this by going on the performance button. And here you can um, select a lot of parameters, I think up to four or eight um, for each knob that will be changed when you dial this knob. So how does this work? Um, the first button, button A, is that one. So I press yes and now you see that I have five different parameters that I could control with this one. So for a performance, when, when I play live or play my, my home concerts or whatever, um, I don't want to, to dive into these submenus all the time. I want to have the sequence playing and I want just to, to, to move this knob and then I want something cool to happen. So I go into this performance page and first you have to, to select which track it should affect. So it goes from track one to four also to the effects. Um, and let's just pretend that I want to open the filter with this one. So I start to, to look up for, for the right parameter, in this case, filter one frequency. Um, and then I can determine how much this knob will affect this parameter. Let's bring in the second oscillator. Now I realize that when I open the filter the sound gets a bit louder and because I don't want it to kill the mix I will select the amp of this first patch and decrease the volume. To compensate for the higher volume that results in the uh, opening of the filter. Maybe I also want to have some changes to the delay. It would be nice to, to support this um, intensifying effect of, of the filter opening by increasing the feedback of the delay. But then of course the whole sound starts to explode so I will again compensate 
by doing two things. The first thing is selecting the high pass filter of the delay so that more of the low frequencies are filtered out in the delay. And also I want to decrease the volume of the delay a little bit by selecting the delay mix volume parameter and going a slight minus 20 or something. Yeah, I think this is nice. And maybe now it's a good time to save everything. You have to understand that kits and patterns are stored individually. So you can combine every pattern with a different kit. It's a bit, um, I would say, confusing sometimes when you play live that you have to uh, load these two. And of course, each Electro machine does this in a different way. I think the Digitac has uh, like a hardwired um, pattern kit thing, um, the analog for automa uh, the analog rhythm automatically loads the correspondent ki uh, kit, but I think in the analog four here, you have to manually load these two. It's a bit confusing. So um, always save both. Um, so function kit uh, and select an empty one. And then pattern, pattern save. So now in case something goes wrong, we can just reload everything. Let's go to the second sound. I want to have something that is a percussive sound, not necessarily a drum sound, but some synthesizer blip blop sound that um, gives us some, some rhythmic uh, background in this sound. So when you go there, you have your, your init patch again. So for this one, I want to silence both oscillators. And if you double tap this one, you can, no, that was wrong. You double tap that one, then you can um, load a noise generator. It's actually very nice that you can select the color of the noise with, with this one. Um, and then I completely close the filter and raise the resonance until we have some, some self oscillation. And if we increase, no, oh, we, we don't have to do this. Now there are different ways to, to actually play it. We could um, increase the key track or we could play, play with the filter. Um, and now I introduce some, some modulation of, uh, with, with the envelope here. But of course we need a very, very short very short and snappy envelope. Yeah, I like that. Maybe we also change the correspondent values on the VCA so that the sound gets really short and snappy and we don't have a tail with a lot of bass or other frequencies that we actually don't want. So let's put in Ah, let's do some, some real-time uh, recording here. So when you um, hold the record button and hit play, you can then just enter some notes. Of course, it's possible to change them later. Now this percussive sound is a bit static and not so interesting. So what I want to do is I want to have some random modulation of the pitch. And how to do this is quite simple. Um, I take an LFO and I go for a random waveform. And as a destination, um, usually the filter frequency is selected as default value 
and now I have a constant modulation of, of the pitch. But what I want is I want just one modulation per sound. So I don't want to, to have the sound change after I hit a note. So in order to do this, um, I first select the speed of the LFO to very slow. Um, by the way, this is something that I don't like about the Analog 4. It's not possible to select or to, to adjust the LFO speeds in Hertz or megahertz. That would be very convenient. I like this when it just says I'm one kilohertz or I'm 20 hertz. In this case you have to, to use two different values. It's multiplying. I don't know with what it's multiplying um, and then the, there's also speed. So I think this is very confusing. I would rather have hertz and megahertz but who am I to tell Electron what to do. So it's whatever a very slow modulation now and with um, this one I can uh, decide which trigger mode I want to use. So when it's free it uh, means that it's just a free running LFO that is not affected by anything. Um, with trigger mode I think the LFO is um, starting with each note that you play, play. and um, in this case we want to have one because that means that there's only like one movement with each note. So now each time I press a key it plays a little melody. No, that was something else. Um, yeah, so just find the right value. Now that I set up this randomization LFO it would also be possible to select the panorama of the sound so that with each note it jumps in the panorama field. I think this is a very cool effect. As a last step I want to introduce some delay into that sound and now let's hear how these two sound together. The third sound should be an arpeggiated plucky synth sound. So I want to go for a pulse wave here. Have some modulation here of the, of the width of the square wave. Um, and then I want a very very short and plucky sound. But also with some release, so um, I will bring down the sustain to, to like a mid-range value and then have some release. Of course you need to do this on the VCA as well. I think this is nice. It would also be possible maybe to have some, some modulation of, of the pitch. Also, uh, just very, very slight modulation. Okay, this would be nice. Um, and then let's introduce something that I didn't show you before. It's the arpeggiator. So, if you're going on the ARP page, you can go for go for some sounds here. Don't ask me why the 16th notes are called speed times 6. It absolutely makes no sense to me. But yeah, it's like it is.
That would be nice to modulate um, the decay time of the uh, of the filter envelope. That gives some nice wipes. So I go to the LFO page. We already used the first LFO to modulate the pitch of the oscillator. So if you double tap this, you can go to LFO2. Um, and there select um, envelope filter decay and It's always bi-directional so um, you need to readjust um, the setting after you apply the LFO Yeah, this is nice. If I was to, to record this um, pattern, um, I would hit a 16 step barrier, so just one bar. So now it's possible to go on, on this page, pattern page, um, and go to four bars. Um, and then I can record, you see that this indicator is showing which bar we are in, so I let it run for one, one bar and then jump in with the recording. And let's keep at this length page. Now all the four sounds are using four bars or 64 steps. If you go to advanced mode, things start to get very interesting because you can set individual length for each of these um, patterns. So I want to stick to my 64 here on track three. Um, on track two, I want to go back to the 16 steps that I had. And on track one, um, I want to have only 12 steps. So um, there will always be a little shift of, um, of the notes between these tracks. Um, it's important to set the length value to um, infinite because otherwise it will reset uh, these permutations uh, with any number that you set for the length parameter here. And it's also impossible not to forget to set something to the change value because if you have um, nothing here and you change a pattern, it will never change the pattern. It will always keep uh, stick at this pattern. So it's uh, important to have something here in, in the change value. So now I have some polymetric stuff. Let's listen to it. The last sound for today will be a very low bass sound. So um, first I go to different uh, lower octave here. Um, and then with the second oscillator, I go for minus 12 and have the second one also a bit louder than the first one. By the way, this button is, is very loud, the others are not. Electron was very nice to send me uh, a new faceplate because they um, were uh, suspecting that this faceplate is uh, causing this to, to happen, but I was too lazy to change it. So um, if you want to get an analog 4 and wonder if they are, the buttons are always that loud, usually they are not. But this one is a bit Sticky, like I said. So, um, bass sound. So, uh, two oscillators and let's go very low with the filter. Maybe. I think 
this is already oh we cannot go one octave more to the ground so let's put in some notes here um think like this no yeah i also want this to be only one bar This is quite static, so I want to have some random modulation of the filter here. So I go to my random mode, decrease the speed and set the mode to one. And then I can dial in the modulation of the filter frequency. Then let's see how the volumes should be. last trick for today is the global transpose feature. If you go to the transpose page, it's possible to transpose everything that is running inside the sequencer on all of the tracks by hitting one of the buttons. So this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.